Hi guys, this is Carlos Machin with CNC Aquariums. We're here at Richard of Aficionado Channel's uh, headquarters. Today we're going to be doing a review of the Ecotech Radeon Gen 4 XR30 Pro. Uh, we're also going to do a side-by-side -side comparison of the Gen 3 version of the XR30 Pro. So I hope you guys enjoy. So Ecotech Marine has been a trusted source of lighting for many different aquaculture facilities and, and online vendors and been a tried and proven coral grower. The, the versatility of the Gen 3 was set forth just from the ability to, to upgrade it, downgrade it, and anything that you wanted to do to personalize it from first generation all the way to the gen, third generation between the pucks and the drivers and so forth especially with the capabilities that they brought to the, to the market with one of the first styles of the, the puck lighting as well as the UV spectrum, the variety of spectrum that they've provided. Um, and it's just been a, a really good light source for, for the home aquarium as well. So Ecotech decided they would improve it a little bit more and they came out with a Gen 4 Radeon. And this uh, Radeon is uh, what we're going to be looking at today is the new Generation 4 uh, and how they were able to improve such a great light and make it even better. So this is a new Generation 4 Ecotech Radeon Pro and the unboxing of it. So as you can see, out of the box, they're very similar to the Gen 3s. However, uh, the biggest noticeable difference you'll see was right to the side. Now no longer is it just a flat surface, but you're able to see the heat sink and uh, the exposed fins. This is to allow easier escaping of the heat off of the fixture. With their new technology and taller uh, heat sink, they have advanced and, and enlarged the surface area for the heat to escape. And the other big thing with this heat sink that uh, not only does it more effectively and efficiently remove the heat off of the light, the light fixture, but it also allows it to be much, much quieter, significantly quieter than the other uh, fixtures, just because the fan's not working as hard to push a lot of heat off of it. Now, the next big thing that you'll see different is their new technology that they used for the lenses. The uh, Ecotech calls it HEI lenses. The lenses are actually bubbled outward so that it gives it more circular, spherical exposure and spread rather than the conical spread that most LEDs are accustomed to. As you'll notice in, in the, the old fixtures, they're more of a flat optics, but they're built in and, and it's just coming off of one flat source. This is giving it multiple edges and, and spherical so that it can mix easier and you're going to get less of the pin po pinpoint spotting of a particular color. It's all going to blend a lot easier. The thing that's uh, different from what I understand from Ecotech is that they changed out a couple of the, the LEDs and got the fixture a little bit bluer. So that's something that we're going to look at today as well is between the Gen 3 and the Gen 4, how much of a noticeable difference, the coloration of the spectrum that they're now using. Sometimes there's always a little bit of a drawback. Uh, with such a great company that's always been based their model, their business model, solely uh, and, and significantly on the fact that their products are upgradable. You can take a Gen 1 to a Gen 2 to a Gen 3, whether it have been the Radions or their Vortec Wavemaker pumps. They've always allowed that to be a possibility for their customers. However, unfortunately, and from what we understand with a lot of uh, uh, of delay and, and, and hard thought through it, they were not able to, to give us this product that's upgradable. Um, so you can't just take the Gen 3 to the Gen 4 platform, you'd have to uh, upgrade to a full new light. Okay guys, so you can see now what we've done is we've shut off the two out of the three fixtures that Richard's got in his aquarium and we're just are focusing on just the center one just so you can get a good idea of the spread of the one fixture uh, without blending of the others. Uh, but it, we're getting about a two foot left to right spread on this one fixture now, pretty good uh, color balance and, and, and blending and uh, we're getting a good amount of light towards the sand bed. So we've been monitoring the PAR 
uh, from a day-to-day -day basis throughout the day with the PMK module from Neptune at the sand bed level so that we can really see now what the difference is going to be with the Gen 3 versus the Gen 4 especially on the sand bed that's that's a big big one that we always wonder how much power we're we getting at the sand bed um, after that we're going to go ahead and, and test it with the Ap Apogee's latest uh, PAR meter MQ510 I believe it is and we're going to measure the PAR on both fixtures from top to bottom and in a couple different areas so that we can kind of really try to compare apples to apples alright guys so we're here testing the Gen 3 with the, the Apogee PAR meter and uh, looks like right below the surface we're getting about average about 960, 970 par, um, which is pretty significant. But as we go down, obviously we're going to lose a little bit, but we're going to go ahead and test right here uh, by uh, Richard's tall, the highest coral in the tank right now is an Acropora frag, which looks like, I would say, give or take about five, maybe six inches from the top of the water line. And um, we're getting approximately... 730 740 par right at the top of that 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 rock structure there so we're going to continue as we go down to towards the sand bed too i'm going to try to stay close to the rock structure as much as we can because obviously that's where the corals are going to be 480 give or take right about there Let's see where these a cans are sitting here so right about where these eight cans are sitting, we're getting approximately 300 par, okay? And then let's take it down to these five uh, five yes, five bites, sand bed basically. Right here we're getting, we're getting about 170 par. So you can see the, the wide difference of the par from the top down to the bottom. Let's uh, also let's get to left to right and see where we're at here. The next shelf of Acropora that Richard's got here. So we're hitting, which is about I would say about a f a foot away from the center of the fixture, and about about a foot down. We're getting about 275, 280 par here. About the same distance. To the left, about 280, 300. It's, it kind of goes up and down, maybe some water flow. So to the left side of the tank of this fixture here uh, and this rock structure, um, where it looks like Richard's got a piece of Monopora spongioides, he's getting about 120, 130 par at that area. So as you can see, it. Um, it disperses as you get further away and further down from from the flight fixture. So we've just finished reading all the par meeting, uh, readings on, on this Gen 3 fixture in the center of, of Richard's tank with this rock structure and his corals and the way he's got it all set up here. Um, the biggest thing also is that the fixture is only at 80 percent. So obviously if you, you have different uh, percentages or settings with your fixture you might get a little bit different par readings in different areas of the tank. So. Um, We'll go ahead in a few now and, and take a look at the Gen 4 uh, in the same position. All right, guys, so we went ahead and installed the Gen 4 Radeon Pro XR30. And, uh, you know, subtly, obviously, again, like we said, the difference in the light itself looks very, very similar. Um, but I did notice a slightly different pop in the light spectrum or the corals. It's a lot more crisp, uh, crisp whitish blue coloring uh, we brought them back the same exact uh, intensities on all the channels that we had before and uh, trying to really you know again compare apples to apples and now we're gonna go ahead and, and measure the par readings um, and see how it, it differs in terms of height uh, from the top of the tank all the way down to the bottom this time we're gonna go a little bit further out too because uh, we want to see how far the plateauing effect really occurs with the new gen force so we're going to go ahead and start with the Apogee uh, par meter. I'm going to go ahead and start again dead center of the fixture, just, just below the, the surface of the water. And let's see, we've got about 1,150 par, 1,150. We'll go right down to this uh, highest center acro frag here, and we're hitting right about, right about 890, somewhere around there. Okay. 
Um, I'm gonna bring it out right about the same height. To the left of the fixture, we're getting about just about 780, almost 800. All right. To the right, about the same height, just about 600 par, right about there. Let's go ahead and test right the other acros that we tested last time. See what we're getting there. Now we're getting over here on this shelf, approximately 330 par. Okay. Let's check out where we're doing here with these A cans. We're getting about 330 par right there at the A cans. Okay, let's check it. Let's check out again with the uh, the spongioides here. And just about 200 par now at the, at the spongioides. All right, so let's go ahead and, and check out the favites over here on the sand bed again. And at the sand bed, we're getting about 300 par. Right around, right about 300 up par, 296, 300. So um, definitely seeing a more consistent par reading around the area of, uh, of, of spread. Here's the right, I would say probably the right extreme front. We're getting about 250 par. Uh, it's, it's overall a wider, more, more distributed, well distributed spread of, of par readings. We're not getting that high peak like we were getting before. So it's uh, very interesting to see how they were able to do this with the, with the different uh, technology of the, of, the, of, the, of the optics. So guys, just to wrap up our review here of the Gen 3 versus the Gen 4 uh, Ecotech Radeon Pro, um, what I've come to find doing our little experiments with the PAR meters is that uh, the Gen 4 definitely uh, spreads out the light a little bit, a lot more actually, a lot more unified throughout it, its coverage area, uh, giving you more unified PAR readings throughout the general heights and, and, and what uh, areas of the, of the, uh, the spectrum. Uh, the color spectrum seems to be very, very well blended, very crisp. Um, so I'm really excited to see what the kind of coral growth Rick, Richard gets out of the uh, area right above the, uh, the Gen 4. Once again, this is Carlos Machin with CNC Aquariums here at Aficionado Channel's headquarters. And we just finished doing a review of Ecotech Marine's new Generation 4 Radeon Pro XR30. So I hope you enjoyed it and uh, look forward to seeing you guys again.